Hi, you probably want to learn how to do a basic composite in Fusion. Well, I want to show you. My name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe if you want more of that. But for now, let's get compositing. You are, are you gonna cut away? All right, here I am in the Fusion page of Resolve 17. This is what we're gonna be making. We're gonna be putting a robot behind our talent here and kind of learning how to put these elements together inside of Fusion. Compositing is really all about just combining different elements to make something new. Our original footage is just the lady working at her laptop. And then we add the robot in and solve a bunch of problems until we get to a final image that looks like this. There's a couple things that we're going to be going over. One is just how to solve some of the basic problems that happen when you're compositing things like removing backgrounds, things like putting elements behind other elements, matching blur and matching colors, matching lighting, all of those things coming up. So let's jump in. I am going to keep things pretty basic, but if you've never used Fusion or Nodes before, make sure to check out this video because that will help a lot and you will be a lot less lost. Okay, I'm gonna open up our two viewers here so that we can just look at one piece at a time. And I'm just gonna walk through our node tree and explain everything. Close our media pool so we have a little bit more room. The first thing let's start with is media in. That's this node right here. All it does is just open a piece of media, which is this footage of the lady working at her laptop. I also have media in two which if I hit one on the keyboard, we can bring that up. This is just a stock photo, a 3D render of a robot, and it's on a white background. Ideally, you wouldn't want something like this on a white background, you'd want it on a clear background, but this is what we had. So a couple things if we're starting out with a composite, if we have an idea about what we actually wanna do, it's really just a matter of figuring out what you want the comp to look like and solving each problem that comes up along the way. What we're looking to do is put this robot behind our talent here, and there are a couple problems right off the bat. First of all, if we're gonna put something behind something else, well, it's not like we have this split up in layers or something. So what we're gonna to need to do is either cut this out into layers or erase the parts of the foreground that would be behind certain things here in the shot. I'm just gonna take some of my nodes away here. We'll set these over to the side. We'll look at those later. We'll just kind of rebuild this. So right now in our comp, we have our talent here. And if we take our robot, which is media in two, and merge it over media in one, just like that. So if we look at our comp as it is right now, and we think about what we want it to be, we can really just start to work on some of the problems that are happening. The first problem is we have this white background behind our robot, which we don't want. It's obviously a cut out picture like this. So we can use a tool to get rid of the white background. That tool in Fusion is called a Luma Keyer. So I'm gonna hit shift spacebar and type L-U-M-A, and that will bring up our Luma Keyer node. I'll hit add. And because I wasn't paying attention, it just added it after the merge. I can hold shift and just drag it out of there. So now it's just by itself. And I can hold shift again and drag it in between our media in two and our merge. And so that's just going to affect our robot. So right now we have something happening, but it's not what we actually want. Basically what a Luma Keyer does is it gets rid of pixels in an image based on how bright they are. So basically we're wanting to get rid of the brightest pixels. Right now it's getting rid of the darker pixels. So let's go over here and click invert. And that's gonna do a lot of what we want, but it's not quite right because it's getting rid of like the top half of the pixels. Anything that's brighter than gray, it's just kind of deleting. Let's take these thresholds here and I'm gonna push this low up until it brings that white background back in. And then I'm just gonna back it off just a touch. There we go, something like that. And now it's got rid of the white background. If we zoom in here, we'll see the edges are pretty nasty. And so we can actually clean those up by using a couple things here. We can contract and expand will work pretty well. We can push this up just a touch and that'll get rid of those little fuzzies. You can also blur it just a little bit and that's gonna clean up our edges and actually do a really good job Contract this just a touch more. And especially for something like this, there isn't like hair or anything like that. It's just really solid. That's gonna look pretty good for what we're doing. So now we have the white background gone from our robot. And now again, we just go back to asking ourselves, okay, what else needs to happen to make this composite work? Well, first of all, the robot is way too small, unless we're gonna make him like back on the counter or something. If we wanna make him, you know, life size, we need to make it a little bigger. So let's go back to our merge. Zoom in here so we can see a little easier. And with the merge node selected, we can resize this and kind of move this to where, if we're imagining 
this robot behind her, how big would he be? Well, I think he'd be a little smaller because he'd be in the background. Maybe something like that, let's say, depending on your perspective and everything. That's a rough estimation. So that's great. What's the next problem? Well, there's two robots. Do we want two robots? Not really. So we can mask this so that we only have one robot. Easiest way to do that is in our media in. If I bring that up in our second viewer, with this node selected, I can just go over to our polygon mask. I'll just click on that. That will add a mask. And for now, I'll disconnect it. And I'm just gonna draw a really rough shape to just isolate this one robot. Bloop. Doesn't have to be great. And now we'll just connect our polygon mask back into our media in two. And now we only have one robot. Yes. I'll go to our media out and hit two on the keyboard. Now we have all kinds of wacky things happening. The reason this is acting strange is because of our Luma keyer, which we can also just use this same mask and connect it to our Luma keyer like that. And it solves all of our problems and everything's bright and beautiful again. Okay, so now we have the robot basically sized decently. There's just one robot and the background is gone. But now we have this glaring problem. The robot is in front of our talent here and he's supposed to be in the background. So how do we do that? If we don't have layers or anything, this clip is just one solid piece of video. How do we put something behind something else in video? The answer again is masks. So what we're really gonna do is just mask out the parts that should be behind other things so that it looks like it's in the background. And if the shot's moving around a lot, you'd have to track each mask. We're not gonna worry so much about that today because she doesn't move around that much and we can probably get away with just doing sort of a soft thing for now. And of course, if you have a static shot with something that isn't moving, this is a whole lot easier. So why don't we grab a polygon mask, just grab that, make a node. And with the polygon mask selected, We'll go up here to our viewer and we're just going to draw a shape around anything that's in the foreground and we're going to use that to put the background stuff behind it. Okay, so there's her shoulder. Then I'll add another mask. This time I'll just use a rectangle mask. Select that and we're just going to position this right about where that monitor is. Okay, so we have our basic shapes there that are going to block the robot from being in front of her. Now we just have to hook those up. So let's go down to our nodes. What I'll do is take one mask and pipe it into another mask. All that does is just combine the masks. So now we have both of these shapes that are basically gonna work as one mask. So let's take these, and I like to put masks, if we're gonna mask a merge, I like to put them below a merge. We'll take the output of the mask and pipe it into the merge. And now let's take a look at what's happening. It's almost what we want. So we can just see the parts of the robot in the foreground and it's gone in the background, which is actually the opposite of what we want. The great thing is that in our merge, we can go over here to the inspector and under settings, we can select apply mask inverted and look what happens. Boom, it's where we want. It's see what we're doing, you know, we're on our way. See, this is starting to come together. Now let's look at the image and say, okay, what kind of problems are there? Well, one of them is the mask isn't super accurate. The other one is that this edge is way too sharp. So let's fix both of those. I'm gonna select our polygon mask, which is her shoulder. And we can kind of just make this a little bit more detailed. Again, if this were moving a lot, you would have to do a lot more work, but you know, I kind of picked an easy one just so we can learn a little bit of compositing here. And now that we have this shape just a little bit closer to what we want, we can soften that edge. So I'll just take this soft edge thing and push that out just a touch, just a little bit. And now if we kind of click off of it, can see that's a pretty good uh, pretty good little mask, right? And the great thing is we're gonna be blurring this a little bit, so even if the edge isn't perfect, it's still gonna look pretty good. And of course, from farther away, it looks great. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for the rectangle mask. Select rectangle. And again, I'm just gonna soften this edge a little bit and I'll move it up. And what I'm really looking at is the blurriness of this actual foreground element here. And I'm just gonna bring this up so it looks like it makes sense. So it's showing up behind that monitor, just like everything else is. So now we have the robot behind her. And again, depending on our angle and how big our robot is and everything, we might wanna change that. But the great thing is, because we've made these masks on the foreground stuff, we can actually move our robot around and he'll still be masked pretty well. So we can change the size and everything. Say maybe we want him just a touch bigger. We can adjust that and it doesn't really hurt our masks. And again, if she were moving around a ton, we would have to track each of these masks, which I do have several tutorials on tracking, that kind of thing. But if you guys want a little more detailed video on that, let me know in the comments. So now our robot is behind the lady. 
It's working pretty well. But if he were actually back here, if he's in the background and she's in focus, and it looks like we have a pretty wide aperture because everything in the background is super blurry, he's going to have to be blurry too. So let's blur him. So we're going to take our robot, which is coming off of our Luma keyer here, and we're going to add a blur, but not just any blur. I'm going to hit shift spacebar, and I'm going to type L-E-N-S for lens, and we're going to select lens blur. And I'll hit add. This lens blur is a blur that emulates the defocus that a lens will give you. So let's look over here. If we knew a little bit more about our lens, we could kind of dial some stuff in here, but we can take a lot of information just by looking at our background. So if we look back here in our background, we can look at the bokeh and see what shape it is. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So we can actually select the shape that we want to match the shape in the background. So if there's seven sided bokeh, that means it's a heptagon, which is seven sides. So we'll change our aperture shape to heptagon. And now really we just need to adjust how blurry this is because everything here is just way too blurry. It's not going to be blurrier than our background because that's not how lenses work. So we certainly don't want it that blurry. We don't want it this sharp. We want it blurrier than what's in focus, but not as blurry as the very background. So what I like to do is get so where we can see the bokeh in the background. We can see some highlights here and we're going to boost up this blur size until it's about the size of the background. And then we're going to bring it back. So I would say right about there is about the size of our background, 3.31. So let's split that difference to maybe like two-ish and see how that looks. I feel like that's pretty natural. I'd maybe push him back just a touch more. So we don't wanna go over three, but we could definitely boost it just a touch. And I feel like that's looking pretty nice. So here's our composite so far. What else isn't quite right about it? A very big thing with compositing is making sure that the light matches. And sometimes you just can't plan or do anything to match the lighting, but you can do some tricks in post to make it seem a little more natural. There's a couple things that we want to focus on here. First of all, we want anything that's really dark in our shot to be about the same darkness as dark things here in our robot. And same thing for the light things. You know, if we don't have anything that's bright white, it's not super likely that we're going to have a bright white on our robot. If we don't have anything that's pure black, we aren't going to have any pure black on our robot. Let's color correct our robot to match the brightnesses of our footage. We'll go down to our nodes here and I'll bring this up and in between our lens blur and our merge, we're going to add a color corrector node. Grab that and put that in between our lens blur and our merge. With our color corrector node selected, you can scroll down here to where it says gain and lift. Gain controls the brightest parts of the image and lift controls the darkest parts of the image. And so really what we wanna do is adjust these so that they look natural with this shot. So I'll show you a little trick that I learned about matching these brightnesses. And this isn't too far off anyway. You can mouse over things here in the viewer. And if you look down here on this little bar, it will show you the RGB values. Where it says color here on the right, it gives you three values. And those are basically just the brightnesses of each channel. And so what we're kind of looking for when we go over a really bright part of the image, I'll just move my mouse around over the brightest parts. And then we'll look down here and we got to see about how bright they get. Like what's the brightest anything gets? Right now it's like 0.87. What about the foreground? 0 0.9, 0 0.91, something like that. Maybe back here, 0.94. So the brightest anything really gets is like 0.9. And if we mouse over our robot here, we can double check and make sure he's not too bright either. So 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So he's looking pretty good as far as brightness goes, I would say. This one's maybe 0.4 or 0.94. He's maybe just a little bit bright, but we can actually just kind of limit how bright he gets by adjusting this gain right here. So I can take this gain and just put 0.94 because that basically controls as bright as anything can go in our robot here. So it's making sure that it doesn't look just super unnatural. And we can do the same thing for the darkest parts of the image. So I'm going to mouse over what I think is really dark and look down here. We got 0 0.04, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. So somewhere in there, maybe 0 0.05, like in the darkest parts of her hair. And see here in our robot, if we go over the darkest parts, yeah, we're about there as well. So we might actually be okay. But if we do find that things are a little bit too dark, so right here in this part of the robot, if we look at our numbers, we're at 0 0.01, which is just darker than everything else, which isn't necessarily unrealistic. But if whatever camera that we are shooting just doesn't record blacks that are that deep, it's going to look unnatural for us to have stuff in our composite that is that dark. 
So let's take this lift up and we'll just lift that up 0 0.04. And the other thing I'm gonna do is go over to options and click pre-divide and post multiply. That'll make sure that we're only color correcting our robot and not like everything, which is kind of a weird way that the color corrector node works sometimes. Now this robot looks a little bit washed out, so I'm just gonna take the gamma and push that down just a touch, just to kind of match the contrast in the rest of the scene, something like that. So now we've got our robot behind her, but there's still something that looks a little bit off. And I think the reason is because this robot has this kind of blue light coming from stage right, and she doesn't have anything like that going on. There's nothing else like that in the shot. So what we can do is kind of cheat a little bit and add kind of a fake light on the right side of this scene to make everything kind of feel like it lives together. So what we'll do is down here in our nodes, we're going to add some color correction to media in one. So I'll select media in one, grab our color corrector node and put that in between media in one and our merge. And we're also gonna mask this. So I'll grab a polygon mask, grab that and put that into our color corrector and select that mask. So this color corrector isn't doing anything right now, but we're gonna select parts of our image to color correct with our mask. So let's select one side of her face like this. And it doesn't have to be very exact, just something like this, cause we're gonna soften this a lot. And now I can grab our color corrector like this and I'll go up here to the inspector and we're just gonna push this towards blue just ever so slightly. And what we're trying to do is match this kind of color on her face. So we'll bring it more towards kind of a, that sort of color. And then all we have to do is soften our mask. So I'll grab our polygon and adjust the soft edge. And if we soften that quite a bit, we don't even have to really do that great of a job with our mask here. And now we have that little subtle blue light on here. And look how that just really makes things come together. It looks like they're both in the same environment because they have both the same lighting. And we can really just add a mask, stack masks on this polygon mask to add more lighting to our scene. Again, if there's a lot of movement and everything, you have to track these masks, but this is generally how it works. So I'll select this polygon mask and click on our polygon mask here, and that will stack those masks. I'll select polygon eight, maybe we can just add some light to our curtains here, just add it like this, and then soften the edge. Just so we have a little bit of that blue light spilling on the background. We could also maybe highlight her shoulder here, add another polygon mask, come up here and just add a little, little shape to her shoulder, soften it. It's very subtle. And now we have this blue light hitting our footage. And so it really kind of ties everything together and it makes it look like, hey, there's actually a robot behind her, not just obviously a 3D robot that we added. This is looking pretty good. We could certainly go through and mess with it more if we wanted to, but I'll show you a cheap compositing trick that just makes everything kind of work together a little better, which is adding film grain. And notice that if you zoom in here, there's a certain texture which you won't be able to see really on YouTube, but there's a certain texture that real footage has. It kind of has this little grain and a still, and especially a still from a 3D render, isn't going to have barely any grain at all. And so we can add grain over everything to make it all seem like it's all in one shot. Like there's just a uniformity between our fake stuff and our real stuff. I'll select our last node here and hit shift spacebar and type G-R-A-I-N. And I'm gonna grab our film grain effect here and hit add, and I'm gonna make this a little bit stronger for YouTube. You see how it adds the same grain over the robot as it does on her face and the background and everything. Obviously this is just a little bit too strong. You can take the strength all the way down and then push it up just to where we notice it. And say about there is where I notice it and then we'll bring it down, pretty subtle. But now that just kind of almost subconsciously says, hey, this was all shot together, this is all one shot. So that's really the general workflow of a composite inside of Fusion. And really just in general, I mean, it doesn't matter what app you're using, compositing is compositing. And if you can get your head around these concepts, it's just a matter of learning how to solve each problem inside of Fusion. So I hope that gets you off and running with compositing inside of Fusion. We actually have a whole big old Fusion playlist. You can check that out right here and learn all about all the ins and outs of Fusion. Oh man, we just go over lots of stuff, a lot. Are you gonna end the video?